Hello and welcome back everyone. Today we are going to discuss the last practice problem of this series. We are discussing lead code problem 2435. This is an interesting question because we are going to use 3 dimensional DP here. Now 3D DP sounds a little intimidating but it is actually pretty simple if you can visualize the logic and that was the main reason for including this problem in this set. So let's quickly go through the problem statement once. So you're given a zero indexed m into n integer matrix grid and an integer k. You're currently at position 0 comma 0 and you want to reach position m minus 1 comma n minus 1 which is the lower rightmost corner and you can only move down or right. So return the number of paths where the sum of the elements on the path is divisible by k. Since the answer may be very large, return it modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7. So now the brute force recursive approach is pretty simple. Start from the first cell and explore all possibilities by making two recursive calls at every step. So down and right. And in the end check if the final sum that you got in the base case if that is divisible by k. The main learning in this question is the tabulation approach and we are going to jump right to that discussion. Now if the divisibility condition would have not been there, this question would have been same as the unique paths problem. We would have made a matrix and just stored the sum of the cell on the right and cell below it in the current cell. But coming back to this problem, let's say that we are at the first cell. So from the first cell we have two options. We can either move right that is towards 2 or we can move below that is towards 3. So now let's assume that we know the number of paths from 3 to the end cell and from 2 to the end cell which give a remainder 1 when divided by k and k in this particular case is 3. So we know all the paths from 3 and all the paths from 2 which are going to give a remainder 1 when their sum is divided by 3. So let's say that the number of paths which give a remainder 1 from 3 are x and the number of paths which give a remainder 1 from 2 are y. Now if we knew these two numbers, we could have easily found the number of paths from 5 to the last cell which is 2 which give a remainder 0 when divided by k. And that is because the value of this cell is 5. When 5 will be added to any path that is giving a remainder 1 when divided by 3, we know that after adding 5, the overall sum of that path will become divisible by 3 or will become a multiple of 3. So the total number of paths from 5 to the end cell which are going to give a remainder 0 when divided by k are going to be x plus y. Similarly, let's look for another cell. So let's say that we were at this particular cell and let's say that the number in this cell was not 2, it was 1. So from this cell we have two options, we can either move down or we can move towards right. Now let's say that if we knew the total number of paths from 0 which give a remainder 2 when divided by 3 and we knew all the paths from 4 which give a remainder 2 when divided by 3. So let's say that the number of paths which give a remainder 2 from 0 are w and the number of paths which give a remainder 2 from 4 are y. So the total number of paths which are going to be divisible by 3 from 1 are actually going to be w plus y again because if we add 1 to all the paths which are giving a remainder 2 right now they will actually become divisible by 3. The overall sum will become divisible by 3. So just in case if you are not able to understand this logic we are using this formula here to come up with this logic. So it says that a plus b whole modulo with k is equal to a modulo k plus b modulo k and whole modulo k. So we are actually using this formula to come up with this logic. So now as we can see that unlike earlier when we were just storing the total unique paths from a point, now we need to store the number of paths for each possible remainder separately. So at 2 and 3 we just don't need to store the total paths. At 2 and 3 we need to store the paths that give a remainder 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 till k minus 1. All these values are stored separately. And this is where the third dimension comes into picture. So at every cell we have to store an array of size k which is storing the number of paths for different possible remainders. And final answer will be stored in the upper left corner which is 5 in this case and for remainder 0. Because those are the total paths which are starting from this cell going to the end cell and the sum of those paths are divisible by k. 
and the direction of filling this matrix is same as unique path problems still every cell depends on the cell below it or on its right so we need to fill it right to left and bottom to up now if you've understood this explanation the code will be pretty simple to understand so let's go through the code once so as discussed first of all we are making our helper matrix in which we are going to store our answer bottom up so the size of the matrix is m into n into k so for all the m into n cells we are actually going to store the answer for all the possible remainders so we have a third dimension of k and our base case or the hard coded case is when we are at the cell which is at the bottom rightmost corner and when we are at that cell we only have one path and the sum of that path is equal to the value of the cell itself so the remainder for that path is equal to the value mod k so that is why at that particular cell or at that particular remainder we are storing one because we have found one path at that cell which gives the remainder cell value mod k and in all other remainders the zero value will be stored because we haven't found any path for all those remainders now our last row and last column are also kind of special cases because in the last row we do not have an option to go down we can only go towards right and in the column we cannot go towards right we can only move down so that's why we are filling the last row and last column separately so we are traversing all the cells of the last row and while we are traversing all the cells of the last row for each cell we also have a loop that is going over all the remainders all the possible remainders now within this loop what the logic what we are doing here let's understand with an example so what we are doing here is that so if k is equal to 3 we are traversing for all possible remainders which are 0 1 and 2 now let's say that the grid value is 5 or the cell value is 5 so 0 plus 5 mod 3 is going to give us 2 then 1 plus 5 mod 3 is going to give us 0 and 2 plus 5 mod 3 is going to give us remainder 1 so whatever is stored for remainder 2 in the next cell that value will go in the remainder 1 of this cell whatever is stored in the remainder 1 for the next cell will go in the remainder 0 for this cell whatever value or the total number of paths we have for remainder 0 in the next cell that value will be added to the total number of paths for remainder 2 in this cell so that is exactly what we are doing here we are uh, taking the remainder and adding it to the grid value and seeing that what will be the final remainder we are taking the value stored in the j remainder for the next cell and adding that value in the x remainder for our current cell similar logic we are filling the last column as well we are traversing each cell in the last column and then we are traversing all the possible remainders and we are filling each cell or all the remainders for each cell using the value stored in the next cell and then comes our main logic for all the other cells in this section we are going to fill all the other cells so unlike above these cells have two options they can either move right or they can move down so we will be adding the values from right and down and then those values will be added into our current cell so the, here we are exploring the two options either going down or either going on the right and we are taking both these values and adding it in our current cell and once we are done filling up our entire grid as we discussed the final value will be stored in the first cell and in the zero remainder of that cell because zero remainder is storing all the paths whose sum is divisible by k the time complexity and space complexity for this problem is big o of m into n into k because we are using helper matrix of size m into n into k and we are filling this entire matrix in our code with this we have reached the end of dynamic programming series but your work is not over it is very important to now go on lead code and solve some hard medium and easy questions on your own within the time limit so it is impossible to become proficient in dp without practice also there are some bonus questions in the form of blog posts on our website so do check them out too next our plan is to launch a series on trees so i'll probably see you there Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.